Okay, so you probably know how to play this chord. But what about this chord? Or this chord? Or this chord? Those are all variations of an E major chord. They're all based on the same chord. Now, if you're at all like I was when I was first starting out, I didn't know that you could play chords in multiple places on the neck. In fact, when I took my entrance exam for music school, the uh, professor that gave me the exam asked me to play an F major chord, and I did. And he said, all right, great, now play me that chord in another position. And I didn't know what he meant. I was like, well, that's F major, that's the F chord. I didn't know that you could go here or here, or a number of other places on the neck. So in today's video, we are covering five levels of chords from beginner to pro. Now, if you're interested in this and you wanna learn more about it, I made a whole video course based on the subjects that we're gonna cover in this video. It's called Fretboard Fundamentals Chords and Rhythm, and if you follow the link in the description box down below, you can get 30% off that video course. We take the concepts that we're covering today and we go much more in depth and not just chords, but some of the fundamental techniques behind great rhythm guitar playing and helping you understand the fretboard so that you can play up and down the neck and unlock your guitar. So be sure to get 30% off fretboard fundamentals, chords and rhythm. You can find my other video courses down there. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe. We're coming up on half a million subscribers here and clicking that red button really helps the channel out. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at level one. Level one's the power chord. Now, when we all start playing guitar, more than likely this is one of, if not the first chord types that we all learn. Now, this is level one, so it's really simple. A power chord is only two notes. It's the root note, in this case, E, and the fifth note, in this case, B. Now, if you're not familiar with root and fifth, basically what it means is we're taking two notes from the major scale that the chord is based on. Now, your major scale is seven notes. So there I just played an E major scale. And to play a power chord, I'm taking the first note from that scale, and I'm taking the fifth note from that scale, and I'm playing them together to give me a power chord. Now at its most basic, a power chord is just two notes, root and fifth, but more than likely you probably learned it like this. There's three notes being played there, but the note here on my pinky is just another E the root note. So I have root, fifth, root. Now we can take that chord shape and play it in a couple different places on the neck and still be playing the same chord anywhere we have an E as our root. So I can play a sixth string root here. I can play a fifth string root here off the seventh fret. And I can play a fourth string root here based off of the second fret. Now you might notice this shape is a little bit different. Instead of here, I'm moving my pinky up a half step. And that's because the guitar is tuned in fourths up until the B string. So we have E to A, which is a fourth. Then we have A to D, which is a fourth. And then we have D to G, which is a fourth. And then we have G to B, which is a third. Now, because that's a third, I have to take this note and slide it up a half step to get back to my root, to get back to my octave. Level two are triads. Now a triad is a three note chord, much like a triangle has three sides, a triad, in this case a major triad, is gonna have three notes. And like our power chord, we're pulling those three notes from the major scale. And since we're in the key of E here, we're gonna look at the E major scale. Now, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, this is something that really confused me. When I first learned chords and taught myself, I always thought that that's how you played an E major. 
major. I didn't know that any combination of E, G sharp, and B would give me an E major chord. And you can do that anywhere on the neck. If you stack those three notes together, you're going to get an E major triad. So here in our first position, our traditional E chord shape, I have root, fifth, root. There's my power chord that we played earlier, but I'm gonna add the G sharp right here with my first finger on the first fret, and that's gonna give me a major triad. Then when I move on to the second string and the first string, I have B, which is five, and E, which is one. So the whole chord is root, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. Now again, I can move this around to different parts of the neck and get different chord voicings and different sounds. For instance, I can play it like this. That's the same chord, that's an E major, but it looks completely different. So what do we have going on here? This time I'm gonna start with my third note, G sharp, as the lowest note, then my fifth, B, then my root, E, and then a third G sharp again. So I'm doubling up on the thirds here. Now you might notice something different here, which is my root note, E, is not actually the lowest note. It's my G sharp, my major third, and this is what's called an inversion. You might have heard of people refer to chord inversions, and that's what this is. It's where we take the root note, E, and we replace it as the lowest note with a different note from the chord. So instead of playing uh, E right down here as my lowest note, I could play it here and have what's called a first inversion, where you have the third on the bottom. Now I can move up here to this shape. If you notice, we went back to the power chord here, root, fifth, root. So then if I just bar with my third finger, I can add the major third right there on the second string. And that gives me my major triad. So I went from power chord level one to triad level two. Now these shapes are pulled from what's called the caged system. Uh, this is something we go really in depth on in the chords and rhythm course. Uh, but essentially, it's a way to play major triads in the same key up and down the neck. And this is what really starts to help you unlock your fretboard, especially when it comes to playing chords. Suspensions or sus chords. Now this is another concept that we learn pretty early on as guitar players. Uh, this chord, for example. Those are sus chords, D sus four, D sus two. But what does that actually mean? Well, we're gonna go back to E major here. And remember how we just talked about our triad is root, third, and fifth. Any combination of those three notes is gonna give us an E major triad. But what happens if I get rid of the third and replace it with either the fourth note of the scale or the second note of the scale? Well, we get a sus chord. And in the first position E, that sounds like this. Here's an E sus four. Back to E major. So essentially what's going on here is I'm taking my third note, G sharp, and I'm raising it one half step or one fret up to the fourth note of the scale, which is A. So anytime we have E, A, and B together, we have an E sus four. So we can play that here. We can play that here. We can play that here. And we can play it up the octave here. But you can also do a sus two chord, which is where you replace the third note with the second note of the scale, which is F sharp. So anytime I have E, F sharp, and B together, I have an E sus two, which sounds like this. Next up is major seven chords. Now, like the triad, we're just taking a handful of notes from the major scale and playing them together to get an E major chord. And like the triad, we're gonna play the first, third, and fifth note of that scale, but we're gonna add one more note in this case, which as the name of the chord suggests is the seventh note. So I have my 
E, G sharp, B, but then I also have my D sharp, the seventh note of the scale. And that gives me this interval here, this major seventh interval, which has that dissonance, that kind of rub. Because those notes are really only a half step apart, D sharp and E. So when I stack that together with the rest of the chord, the third and the fifth, I get this sound. So I have root, fifth, major, seventh, major, third. Another really great way to voice that is here. Same idea, root, third, fifth, major, seventh. Now seventh chords are great because they start to invite a little bit more complexity into your sound. Because you have that major seventh interval rubbing against the rest of the chord, it adds a just a nice dynamic, a nice color to your sound. But depending on what else is going on in the song or the music that you might be playing, that seventh might rub against something like a vocal melody or a different chord or uh, a note that the bass or the keys might be playing. So you wanna pay attention of what's going on in the music and that should help you decide when to play what type of chord, a triad, a sus chord, a major seven. Things are starting to get a little bit more complex here. Now level five, the pro level. Now, before I jump into these complicated and sort of weird sounding chords, understand that just because something is complicated doesn't mean that it's pro. Oftentimes when we're playing guitar, the most pro thing to do is to play the most simple thing that's absolutely necessary. Only play what the song needs. Sometimes it just needs a power chord, or sometimes it just needs a triad, but other times, it needs something a little more dense, a little more complicated. And this is where we get into chord alterations, where we're adding color tones and we're shifting parts of the chord around to get really complex and really dense sounding chords. Like this major nine chord, for example. Like we've talked about in this video, chords are just stacked notes from a particular scale. And we're talking about E major here, so we're pulling notes from the E major scale. And so far, we've talked primarily about the root, third, fifth, and seventh, but what about the second note of the scale, uh, or the fourth note of the scale, or the sixth note of the scale? What happens when we start to add these notes into our chords? Well, we get chords like this. Those are all variations of E major. The first chord I played was an E major 6-9. Now we call it a 6-9 because it has both the sixth note from the scale and the ninth note of the scale. Now ninth is just the second, but up the octave. If I keep going up the major scale, I have root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, root, or eighth, and then I can go to the ninth, the 10th, the 11th, so on and so forth. So when I say six nine, what I mean is I'm taking the sixth note of the scale and the ninth note of the scale and I'm adding them to my major chord. So I have root, third, sixth, and the ninth. Also, like we've talked about, any combination anywhere on the neck of those notes is gonna give me that six nine sound. So here's another example. Except there I'm adding the major seventh on top. Now that's a really beautiful sounding chord. But what happens if I alter it even further? What happens if I take the B, the fifth, and drop it down here and I just bar across my 11th fret? What does this give me? That's gonna give me a sharp four because I'm playing the fourth note of the scale, A, but up a half step. So this is like a E major six, nine, sharp 11 or something like that. 
point to understand here is that chords are not set in stone. And the way to learn chords, at least in my opinion, is not to look at chord diagrams and try and memorize where you put your fingers on the fretboard, even though that's how most of us, including myself, learned early on. The reality is there's millions of different ways to approach and play common chords. And you can sit and create your own chords if you like, your own chord voicings, as long as you understand a few basic principles about the guitar neck. If you understand how chords are made, what notes or what intervals go into making up those chords and where to find those intervals on the neck. If you can put those three things together, then you can start to unlock the fretboard and play chords and chord voicings that you wouldn't normally think of and start to have a more firm understanding of the fretboard. So there you go. There's five levels of the E major chord from beginner to pro. And again, I wanna highlight the fact that pro does not always mean the most complicated, the hardest to play, the most complex. Oftentimes, in my experience, the pro move, the pro part to play is the simplest and the best sounding. It's whatever the song needs. But hopefully, this video gave you a little bit better understanding of where chords come from and how to approach them on the neck. And if you want an even deeper understanding of that concept, check out the Fretboard Fundamentals Chords and Rhythm course linked down below. You get 30% off that course. Uh, and you can check out my other video courses down there as well as links to some of the gear that I use to make today's video. Those will be affiliate links, which is a great way to support the channel if you like what I do here. Another way to support the channel is click subscribe and the bell. Uh, we're coming up on half a million subscribers and it really does help the channel out when you subscribe. My name is Rhett Scholl. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.